All right, guys, welcome back to another video. So in this one, we're gonna be building a simple hanging wine cabinet. Now this wine cabinet is for my sister. She wants to give it to her husband as an anniversary gift. So what she was looking for when she gave me the idea for the project was she wanted something where the bottles of wine would be held horizontally against the wall, uh, but also wouldn't be sticking out very far. So the main design goals were we wanted something that would be compact and something that would hold the wine bottles properly. Because if you've never done a wine rack before, the proper way to store a wine bottle is at a negative angle. So you want to make sure that that cork always has wine held up against it just to keep it fresh and keep the seal proper. So that's one of the most important things here. And so as far as casework goes, this cabinet is going to be extremely simple. It's going to be a dovetail case with some dadoed in shelves and then a drawer at the very bottom. So right now we're just breaking down some eight quarter stock. Now I'm not trying to go for a book match or anything here. Of course, that's kind of a byproduct of working this way, but I really have found that by working with eight quarter stock, I get a lot more options in what I want to do. So for the sidewalls of these cabinets, I wanted them to be just under three quarters of an inch because I want to maintain a decent amount of strength, but I also knew I didn't want to start by working with a four quarter board because sometimes with a four quarter board, you can't always get the material that you need or want out of it. So by using this eight quarter stock, I was able to take a section of wood that I knew would look really good with some nice straight grain and get two pieces that looked identical. And so after a few months of not hand cutting dovetails because I've been playing around with my new uh, dovetailing jig, I decided that on this one I wanted to get back into hand tools. So I laid everything out, figured out exactly which side was going to be which, and then I started by doing one of my favorite things with any kind of casework, and that is just cutting a rabbit with a dado stack. Now if you've never tried doing this before, I highly recommend it because when you're hand cutting dovetails it makes it extremely easy to add that rabbit in the back because you can just manually adjust for it in your hand cut dovetails. And so I'm a little bit rusty at this process, like I said I haven't done it in a few months, but as I started doing it, it came back to me pretty good and all the dovetails turned out beautifully. Now you can kind of see my sawing technique here. I, like I said, I am quite rusty, so I'm rocking around a little bit too much, but I try to keep the saw as straight as possible. And all that really matters here is that your angle is okay. You can always go back in and clean it up with some chisels. So it doesn't matter whether you're brand new to cutting dovetails or you haven't cut them in years. It's the best thing to do is just take a shot at it and take your time and go a little bit slower than you normally would. And on these dovetails, I decided to try out a new trick that I saw on Instagram one day where you take a piece of eight quarter stock that has a perfectly square and parallel face and you use that to guide your chisel to make sure that all the inside edges of your dovetails are perfectly squared up. With the tails cut, I can now transfer them over to the pin board. So I'm using the green tape, blue tape, whatever you want to call it method. That works amazingly for getting good, accurately sized pins. So I just start by getting the green tape attached to it, and then I'm using my Lee dovetail jig to actually transfer the marks over. Now, this jig is meant for cutting dovetails, but it also works great for hand cutting dovetails because it gives you a nice solid and accurate surface to mark your dovetails over with. Then of course with the pin board, this is where things are a little bit more challenging. This is one of the things that I think a lot of people don't understand about cutting dovetails is that the pin board is actually the more complex part. 
Even though there's less physical material, the angle that you're having to hold your saw at is a little bit harder to control compared to holding it at the diagonal. Uh, trying to keep that saw perfectly vertical is quite a challenge. But again, all it takes is a little bit of time and patience. And again here, now that we have most of our material cleared out, we can go back over and rough out this area with the chisels. And then once you start getting close to the line, this is where you want to bring in that piece of eight quarter stock and just line it right up against that, that knife line and chisel straight down. And this will give you a perfectly squared up shoulder. This is something I've struggled with for a long time with dovetails and this is really the secret that I needed. And so you can see here as we put the case together that the dovetails are protruding. Now this all this means is that the dovetails are just sticking out past where the joint ends. And the reason for this is just it looks very cool. It, it very much so shows off the hand cut nature of the joint and is overall just a decorative choice. Doesn't really serve anything beyond that. Now on to the shelf joinery. So the idea here is that I wanna make sure that my shelves are locked firmly in place and I need to make sure that they are aligned properly. So what we're gonna be using is my lead dovetail jig, which can also cut sliding dovetails. And for each of the five shelves that we're gonna put in here, we're gonna be cutting a sliding dovetail for it. Now, I wanted to go with sliding dovetails because I figured that they would help hold everything together. Because we have the dovetails in the size of the case to help it hold everything together vertically, and then the sliding dovetails for the shelves would help keep everything together horizontally. So that was the theory here. Alright guys, so we've got the carcass together now, and as you can see, this one does not have any of the sliding dovetails or that in it. And so what happened is I royally screwed up. When I was cutting the sliding dovetails, nine of them came out perfectly, and on that tenth one, everything that possibly could go wrong with the sliding dovetail went wrong. I put the router in too quickly and it chipped out a big section. Uh, the guide bar on the lead jig moved back, and so I got this weirdly angled uh, sliding dovetail, and so everything just kind of went wrong. So this is the original side, and so what I tried to go back and do is enlarge the area here, and I was planning to just go with a thicker shelf piece, uh, go up to 5 eighths of an inch. But then again, when I tried to do that, I screwed up on one of my sections here and ended up cutting it over, having to cut it over five eighths of an inch thick. So we, ended up, so we basically would have had to have a one inch thick shelf in the areas that I kept screwing up on. So I decided to just scrap this first one and remake the whole case itself. And so sometimes it's just the best thing you can do. Now it does suck. This is about uh, $50 worth of material right here. Now it's not all garbage. I can still easily get half inch thick pieces out of these uh, side panels here. Uh, but other than that, there is still a lot of waste here that I'm not super excited about, but it is what it is. It's better to start from scratch rather than trying to fix something that is just not going to work. So what I'm going to be doing differently this time rather than trying to use sliding dovetails because that's kind of an excessive form of joinery in this instance. It's a nice form of joinery if you could pull it off reliably, but as I found out here, when it goes wrong, it goes wrong really quickly. So even though I know I can do it perfectly nine times out of ten, that tenth time is going to screw up the whole project. So all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to use nice simple dados and dowels. So we're just going to cut a quarter inch dado across each side here. We're going to make our shelf pieces. They're going to be a half inch thick. We'll cut a, a quarter inch tendon onto those. And then we'll put in some 3 16 dowels from the outside.
When it came to making the shelf pieces, I again went for some 8 quarter stock that I could then resaw down into these little half inch panels. Now again, this works great. It's a much better use uh, of this lumber because if you tried to get these half inch shelves uh, from 4 quarter stock, you just have so much waste. Whereas by using the 8 quarter stock, you get absolutely a perfect fit every single time. So it's just one of those things I found in my woodworking that 8 quarter stock or you know as thick of a stock as you can possibly get is always going to be more useful. Now we're moving on to the pieces that are actually going to support the bottle. So the important thing here is that you want to make sure that these bottles are not going to roll out on their own, but that you also have to make sure that you can also remove them from the shelves easily. Because if the area is too tight, there's a good chance that you're going to drop the bottle as you're removing it. So for the front support, the area that's going to hold the thinner neck of the bottle, I used a 1 and 3 8 Forstner bit because that, that was able to grip the front of the bottle just perfectly. Then for the back section, I used a 1 inch tall piece of wood and then I just went over it with the 3 inch side of my belt sander. Now again, this supported the back of the wine bottle perfectly, and it's only it's only holding a very small section of it. And so these pieces are just going to be held in some dados by a couple of screws. Now what this allows for is to, you can remove these support pieces, uh, switch them around, you know, really make this shelf a little bit different uh, if you want to change the look of it. You know, if you want some bottles pointed left, some pointed right, that's very easy to do. So the shelves themselves are glued in place uh, and then like I said you, the bottle supports are what you can actually remove and spin around and put in different places because everything is standardized to make sure that it is all interchangeable. For the back panel I had this beautiful piece of not really figured white oak but just had some crazy grain that I haven't really seen before. And so the, the idea that I was going for is that I wanted to book match this to just have this amazing almost flame pattern running up the whole back side of the cabinet. Now this panel did not play nicely. It's about 8 inches tall so when I was actually able to resaw it on the bandsaw it popped really good when I finally made the full cut and both pieces were severely cupped. Now, it took a little bit of ingenuity and patience, but eventually I was able to get it down to the point where it looked good. Now, in quite a few areas, I lost the book match, but for the most part, the grain still lines up and it looks dang good. You can really, it's really hard to tell where the actual seam is when you're looking at it. And I think only, you know, to me, I'm probably the only one that is going to notice that the book match is not perfect. I think to most people, it's, you know, it looks great. Now the only real sacrifice here is on the back side of the panel. I just left you know, some glue lines and some just rough figure that I wouldn't normally leave in there. Uh, but again, it was all worth it to just make sure that that front side, the side that you're gonna see, looked amazing. And to hold this cabin to the wall, we're just using a half inch piece of white oak and cutting it into a French cleat. So one piece will be mounted to the back of the cabinet and the other piece will be mounted to the wall. This is by far the strongest technique for hanging a cabinet on the wall and I highly recommend it if you're doing anything like this wine cabinet that is going to be holding a decent amount of weight. The last part of this was building a small drawer. Now, aesthetically, this is not something that is necessary for this wine cabinet. Uh, but my sister wanted it and I also thought it would look really cool. It's a place where you can kind of keep uh, your bottle opener or you can keep some corks from some f meaningful locations. Just little stuff like that. You know, having a little drawer on a cabinet is just never going to be a bad thing. So for the build of the drawer, I did something I've never actually done before. I thought about doing dovetails, but the pieces here uh, were fairly limited in size. They were all about 3 eighths of an inch thick and I didn't want to go any thicker, otherwise we'd be giving up a lot of space inside of that drawer. So I just went for a simple rabbit design and then put three dowels into each corner. Now this easily has the same amount of strength as dovetails, uh, so I'm not really worried about it ever coming apart. Uh, this is going to be a very small, simple drawer, uh, and it's just going to sit there and exist in the bottom of this cabinet for the rest of its life. It's not something that is going to be getting the same kind of wear and tear and abuse as, let's say, a dresser drawer or something like that. 
And so this method of drawer building is a lot easier than say doing dovetails or box joints, anything like that. Uh, it's a very quick and simple method that also looks really good in the end. Thank you. 